Good morning, kids. It's Auntie Janet checking in. Today is week number four of our story of missionary John Payton, missionary to the New Hebrides Islands. And I'm excited to tell you what happened in John's life today as he continued to serve the Lord and share the gospel to the people of the New Hebrides Islands almost 200 years ago. For those of you who were with us last week, you'll remember that I left you on this page of John and his friends. John had received uh, a request from his missionary friends who lived on the other side of the island to please, please, to bring him flour. They had no flour left, so they didn't have any ability to make a bread, and they needed the bread so that they could survive. But remember, they couldn't go through the island because of the danger of going through the fighting tribe. So they had to go by canoe. And as they got close to the shore and got close to where his missionary friends um, lived, remember, a large wave came and tipped the canoe over and everybody was thrown into the ocean except John. We left John holding to the sides of the canoe. And remember, he was the only one who couldn't swim. Several of the men made it to shore and they turned around and looked and there was John holding on desperately to the canoe. One of the men left the shore, swam out and helped John back to shore. And as soon as he got on shore, there he was standing, his clothes dripping wet. And John said, but the flower, the flower, we had to bring the flower. And as he looked, a large man from the island was coming up out of the water with the pot of flour on his head and it was safely protected, and John was able to deliver the large jar of flour to his missionary friends, and they were so thankful. They visited for a short while, and John's clothes got dried off from a fire nearby, and and he they wanted him to stay and visit for a few days, but John said no, he couldn't, because he knew if he left his home alone with nobody there, that people would try to steal things and his home could be destroyed. So he was determined to go back the very same day. They couldn't go back by canoe. So the only way to go back was overland. And by the time he went, he started to go back. It was supper time or shortly afterwards and the sun was already starting to set. He asked his friends who had come in the canoe with him to go back with him and travel with him overland carefully through the jungles to get back to his house but none of them would travel because they were scared to death of the dark. But John was determined to go, so he left himself. He didn't have a flashlight. He had nothing. And as he started to walk, it got darker and darker. The woods were thick woods and brush and thistles, and he pushed his way through all the way while knowing that he had to be quiet because there was enemy tribes throughout the island. He came to a part in the path where he found a large rock and he knew from being on the on the island that the only way to get back home was to climb this large rock. The problem was the rock was slippery and if he made one wrong move, part of the rock was on the edge of the cliff that he would slide off into the ocean. But he knew this was the only way to go. So the story says that he grabbed tree branches and different things, grabbed onto the part of the rock and pulled himself up hand over hand till he got to the top of the rock. He started to walk carefully, feeling carefully, knowing that one wrong move and he could fall off into the ocean below. He could hear the water lapping against the rock on the side there, but he knew he had to keep going. He walked quietly along the top of the rock and as he did, he could see in the distance little flickers of light and he could hear voices. It was the village of one of the worst enemies tribes in the village, in the whole island, I mean, and he knew he had to be quiet because if they heard him coming, they would definitely come and they would try to kill him. He followed his way along the edge of the rock right till he got to the very last part of the rock and he knew that his only way home was that he was going to have to come off the top of the rock and then walk his way along the edge of the water and into a path to get him home. The only problem was 
He had no idea how deep the water was below. He knew there was one space in the rock where it was smoother. And if you could slide down there, you could at low tide get there and just jump into the water and the water would come to about waist deep and he could walk through. But if it was high tide, it was too deep and John couldn't swim. So what he did was he stood at the top of the rock and he dropped down a few pebbles and he listened. Could he hear them dropping into the water below? Could he tell if the water was too deep or not? And then it's kind of funny to me, the story says he actually had his umbrella with him. After throwing a few rocks down and not really being sure how deep the water was or not, he threw his umbrella down to see if he could listen to it splash below. When he heard his umbrella splash, he thought, you know what, this is the place to go and I'm going to try it. He grabbed his clothes tightly around him and he pushed his way off the edge of the rock and slid down. He t later said that it felt like an eternity, falling, 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 where was the water? And suddenly splash, down he went. Thankfully, it was low tide and the water was only about his waist deep. So he was able to get in the water, stand up and wade his way through. He made it back to shore and found the path and made it safely home. When his friends from home saw him arriving late, late at night, they heard him coming. They couldn't believe that John Payton had traveled all that way by himself in the dark. But how did you make it? How did you get here? Your God must be a great protector. And John said, my God is a protector. He loves me. He cares for me. And he protected me and brought me safely back. Well, things were not good on the island. John continued to minister, to share the gospel, but there were two main tribes on the island of Tana where John lived. There was the Harbor tribe, and they lived down near the ocean and claimed all the land near the ocean and the sea. Then there was the Inland tribe, who, as you can know from their name, lived inland away from the sea. And these two tribes were constantly fighting. Not only were they fighting among themselves, they were fighting over John. And finally, the harbor people said to the inland people, we must make a decision. John Payton will only be allowed to stay on this island if he lives inland on the inland people's land. If he chooses to come and stay out here by us on the harbor people, we're going to kick him off the island. Well, the inland people didn't like it that the harbor people spoke like that about John. So they decided that they were going to solve this problem once and for all. So one day, this large man, the, the leader of the inland people, his name was Enon, came to John's house. And he said to John, John, you must follow me. We're going to solve this problem once and for all. The problem between our tribe, the inland people, and the harbor people. Come with me. John didn't know. Should he go? These people were very fierce warriors. He knew that they were upset with each other. Was this a trap? Was he going to be killed? Should he go? But Enon was a friend and John decided he would go. He followed Enon along a path and before he knew it, they arrived in a village and there in front of John was a large group of warriors. On one side was the inland warriors. On the other side were the harbor warriors, all of them with swords and spears and ready to fight. Inan took John in the middle of this group and in front of everyone, he said to John, I am the leader of the tribe of the inland people. John, we are your friends. We like you, we want you. Those harbor warriors, and he pointed his fingers, those harbor warriors, they don't like you. They don't like the Bible. They don't like God. Give the word, John, and we'll kill them all. <gasps> what? Right in front of John Payton, they were going to have a war and kill all the harbor people? No, no, no. John stood there shaking. He was so afraid, but he said, stop. I love all people. I love the inland tribe. I love the harbor people. And I have come here to tell you of the love of Jesus and how Jesus' love can change your life and change this hatred that you have for others. I'm not afraid to die. You can kill me 
If you want to kill me, I'm not afraid to die. I'm a Christian. I know I'm a child of God, and right away, I'll go to be with God in heaven. But no, I don't want you to fight over me. I will not choose one person or the other. You must have peace. I love all people, the inland people and the harbor people. Please do not fight. And believe it or not, the warriors put down their spears and swords and they agreed to stop and not fight. And there was peace for a while. But it wasn't lasting peace because they really didn't like each other and they still hadn't accepted the message of salvation and understand, understood Jesus' love for them. So even though it was peaceful for a while, John soon got word that they were ready to fight again. In fact, they decided, the harbor people decided if they couldn't get at John Payton himself, they were going to try and hurt Enon, the, the leader of the tribe of the inland people. So you know what? They got their witch, the harbor people got their witch doctors and tried to put spells on Enon. But then somebody actually did give Enon some poisoned food and that it hurt him. John got word that Enon was sick and so he went to Enon's house to look after him and he could tell Enon was not well. He knew it wasn't because of witchcraft. He knew that probably somebody had tried to poison Enon. So he looked after him and Enon got well for a while and John went back home. But then he got word another day that Enon really was not well. And warriors from Enon's inland people came to get John and came to his house and said, you must come now. Chief Enon has called for you. Come, he is not well, you must come. John again didn't know, was it a trap? These people could be trying to hurt him, but he loved Enon and decided to go. He came to Enon's house and there laying in Enon's hut was Enon on the floor in a dirty little hunt, hut covered in a blanket. And when John saw him, he knew Enon did not have long to live. His face didn't look well. His breathing didn't look well, didn't sound well. And he knew that Enon was probably going to die, probably from the poisoned food. But then something strange happened. All the warriors left John and Enon in the house alone. They left and went off in the woods. John looked around. There was no one but him and Enon. He came closer to Enon to talk to him. And as he did, I'm going to put the book down for a minute. Enon did something very surprising to John. He grabbed John by the shirt and then from under the blanket out came his other hand and in his hand was a large sword and the knife came right to John's heart and it was pointing right at John. And Enon said, I could kill you, John. John, can you imagine what you'd feel with a hand here and a large sword and knife right at, pointed at your heart? John's heart started to pound, but he just started to pray, God, protect my life, protect my life. And as he prayed, Enon let go of his shirt. He let go of his sword. He let go of John and he said, go, go quickly. I will not kill you. John got up, he left, he went home, ran home and he went and he heard the next day that Enon had died. God had protected John, but once Enon died, things were not well. The warring tribes got more and more violent and it was soon not safe for John to leave his home. John stayed inside, people started to steal his things and friends warned him time and time again, John, there's trouble coming. In fact, one day John was at home and a tomahawk came flying through the window and just missed his head. Another day when John was out uh, walking there, he was walking and another warrior threw a tomahawk and again John ducked and just missed him. Why was there so much violence and so much fighting? How could John continue to minister to these people when time after time there was a threat on his life? But yet John lovingly prayed for these people and continued to share the love of Christ with them, even in these very, very difficult times. Finally, it got to the place when the harbor people and the inland people were going to have a huge war. Word came on the island and there was the sounds of the drums beating 
and they they knew that the war was going to happen. John didn't know if it was safe to stay in his home, so he decided to run to a village of another friendly uh, chief, a, a, a chief named Noar. And John went to this village. He could hear the sounds of war getting ready, both the warriors of the inland people and the harbor people ready to have a huge battle. The people in Noar's village started to run. Mothers ran with their children, scared to death. What will happen? Will our lives be saved? Some people actually even ran out and stayed in the ocean and in the water, thinking that that's where they would be safe. But John and Noar stayed there. Noar was a lame man. Even though he was the leader of his tribe, he had been injured and he couldn't run. So he was a Christian and he said to John, John, let's do the thing that we can only do. Let's stay and pray. He turned over a canoe. He sat on the canoe and John knelt beside him and together they prayed. God, there's this huge war. You know of these warriors coming. There's so many people just intent on killing others and hurt. This is not the way of the Bible. This is not the way to show the love of Christ. God, please hold back these warriors. Stop this war. And John prayed and prayed. And after a few minutes, Noah leaned over and tapped John. He said, John, open your eyes and look. And as John opened his eyes and looked, there surrounding them was warrior after warrior of the harbor people. These were the men who were determined to kill John Payton, to kill Chief Noar and the island people. But instead of coming at them and rushing at them with spears and swords, they stood in silence. John waited. He bowed his head. He prayed again. And as he prayed, one by one, those warriors stepped away, turned around, and left in silence. Not a spear thrown, not a tomahawk thrown. No one killed. They walked away. God had protected them. John decided to stay in the village with Chief Noir for several days, and it looked like it was going to quiet down. But again, after three days, the sounds of the dr war drums started again. The harbor people were coming again. When would this violence stop? But they seemed determined to come after John Payton and the island people. Chief Noir said to John, we know God can protect you. But I think you must run, John. I think you must go for safety. I'm concerned that these harbor people are coming and maybe this time they won't turn around and go away. So John, please listen to me. Follow my son. He will give you a hiding place and you must do what my son tells you. Follow him into the bushes and go where he says and hide where he says. Are you sure, Chief Noir? I want to stay here and protect you. No, Chief Noir said, go with my son and follow him. So John Payton follows his son. Into the bush they went until they came into the woods and they found a large chestnut tree. And at the top of the chestnut tree, there was a branch. Chief Noir's son whispered to John, climb, sir, climb. John went to the top of this chestnut tree. It was dark. He could hear the drum sounding, the warriors, calls coming for a war to start. And Chief Noir's son said, you stay here, don't move, and I will be back when it's safe for you. So John sat in the top of a chestnut tree waiting. What do you think? Would he be safe? What, how long would he have to stay there? Were the warriors actually going to come and have a war? Was there going to be an all-out battle with people hurt? Or would once again God stop things and, and John be protected and the people of the island people tribe and the harbor people tribe, would they actually stop fighting? Well, you're going to have to come back next week and find out what happens when there's this big war and the warriors were ready. What happened to John Payton? How did God protect him? What was the end of the story? Come back next week. <laughs>